Hi, I'm Stephanie Rublitz. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm telling you about my most favorite, most used, most needed sewing tools and products. I'm excited. All right, so a lot of these things are things that you may have seen me use already, um, but uh, I really wanted to get into the whys and what I find so beneficial um, about them. So let's start with the tools. Um, number one is my awl. Uh, I use this for everything. I use it for sliding thread out from under the foot when I need to. I use it for guiding things through the foot when my fingers are just like big sausages that are in the way. This is what helps me. So more than just like yeah, I'll use them for poking holes if I'm putting a snap in or something like that. But I use it to guide fabric more than anything else. And if you watch my video on using a rolled hem foot, this is like 100%. Like it's it's all about the all for me. It's all about the all. <laughs> anyway, um, everybody talks about their stitch ripper, but this, I don't know if it'll, this is the like the little sort of scalpel stitch ripper. I do have the other one with the little knobbly ball, you know, for sliding under through the seam so that it doesn't catch your fabric. But this is the one that I go to all the time. This is the one that like, if I can't find this one, then I'll use this one. But the scalpel seam ripper is hands down my favorite. It's, it has such a fine point on it. And the metal is actually thinner. So I find that even in tight stitches, I can really get under there. Whereas the poker on this is kind of a bit more rounded. Um, so you actually need a bit more space to get that in there sometimes. So the scalpel, I don't know if that's actually what it's called. This one's also a lot easier to sharpen um, when it gets dull. I just use like our steel from the kitchen that we sharpen our knives on. Um, and, or sometimes if it gets really bad, then I'll sharpen it on a stone, like a regular knife. Uh, but even this one is getting, it's getting to the time where it's a bit beat up. It's time for it to be replaced. So I'll be looking for another one. I, okay. Number three, well, three and four, I'll show them together. A knitting and a crochet needle. I, yes, I have a knitting and a crochet needle in my sewing kit. Knitting needle, again, super handy if I'm like needing something smaller than my fingers to guide fabric through. Um, I also use it as a point turner and I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm a fan of just using what I have on hand. Like it's nice to go and buy specialty tools for stuff, but I don't ever know that I need a specialty tool until I'm in the middle of making a project. So I, I don't rush out and buy it. I just use what I've got around. Same thing with my really long crochet hook. Um, I use this as a loop turner, honestly. Um, I'll sew my loop and then I'll stick this through and then I'll either, depending on what kind of fabric it is and how strong it is, I'll either just cut a, a little slit on one side of the loop and hook that around and pull it through or I'll um, use the ends of the threads that are hanging off and I'll twist it around and I'll pull it through. So, I mean, yeah, knitting and crochet needles, big hits for me. Maybe one day I'll get a loop turner. Maybe one day I'll get a point turner, but I mean, these work. All right, these babies, hemostats. These are teeny tiny little hemostats. And if I'm gonna catch a thread with it, I do have to make sure that the thread is coming in this way and not that way um, for it to get a good grip. But I use these for like pulling the threads out when I'm threading my serger. Everybody talks about tweezers and I have a pair of those kicking around here too, um, but I just, I love these. Or even when you're cleaning out like fuzz from inside your um, sewing machine. The thing about tweezers, hang on. Okay, the thing about tweezers is that in order for them to be open, you need to have the space for them to be open down here. And sometimes that's, that's fine. Like you're not going deep into something, but if I'm going deep into my serger or into my sewing machine to like get a piece of thread that's cogging up the works or like fuzz or something if I'm cleaning out my sewing machine, these stay nice and narrow and it like you only need this little bit of space for workability. So these, um, and these, I mean, you should be able to find these at like a medical supply store. All right, next is my walking foot. Now a walking foot, especially if you're doing anything stretch, will change your life. I got this as part of the quilting kit for my sewing machine. And I would say I use this way more for stretch fabric than I ever did quilting, to be totally honest. Um, 
it just helps it, it gives you your own feed dogs so so these feed dogs that you would normally see coming up underneath your needle to feed your fabric through it gives you feed dogs on top too so that you're not getting drag on the top piece of fabric while the bottom piece gets pulled through and then you know like your top piece kind of starts bulking up and yeah it's it's not cool it's not pretty it's not cute so yeah this is a big this was a game changer for me especially because my regular sewing machine really hates stretch fabric but even I have my mother-in-law's old um, Sears Kenmore machine that I can really release the tension on the presser foot and so that helps me a ton when I'm sewing stretch but I'll still put this on for a lot of stretch fabric I did actually when I was making this shirt um, this was hugely important for me a good old bar of soap yep uh, and if I'm doing any hand stitching, I will take my thread and I will run it over the soap. As you would maybe like if you were leather stitching, you might put beeswax or something on your thread. But beeswax is, I don't know, I don't like if I'm sewing garments, I don't want beeswax on my clothes because it stays sticky, it doesn't really wash out. Um, which is why it's great for leather. But uh, yeah, I just use soap. It doesn't clump it together super tight but it make it kind of gives enough of a coating to your thread that it's not constantly knotting up on you um and then when you wash your clothes it just washes out all right the next thing is this clear stabilizer um this actually is almost thick enough for it to be like clear bra strap but it does come thinner um unfortunately <laughs> I have to order everything now so I don't actually get to like get my hands on it so but I'm still using this thicker stuff and it's working fine so when I made um, my t-shirts I put this in the shoulder seams because your shoulder seams are cut on the bias a little bit and so over time those seams are gonna pull more so if you want your stretch garments to kind of last a little bit longer um, this is something that's great to just sew in the seam and I just pin it onto the underside of the seam sew my seam on top of it and that's really all she wrote then eventually that it gets folded when I fold my seam flat um it kind of just ends up in between layers of fabric you don't even know that it's there but it really helps with the longevity of your garments um and how they hang and and even if they're like on a hanger for a long time over time they'll start to stretch out in the shoulders so this is a good one all right the next one is stretch stay tape this is really really handy if you're sewing a stretch especially if you're not able to use a serger um this keeps your stretch fabric it'll still allow it to stretch the way you need it to but it won't overstretch and pop your stitches so i've actually i don't know if you can see it no it's too folded in so i did use it on the bottom of these t-shirts i didn't have to with my like regular cotton jersey knit but this was a linen rayon and it just it doesn't have the recovery after you stretch it it will just kind of keep going and get all stretched out of whack so on my bottom hem i iron this on there's an adhesive only on one side so this is not like a iron up your hem and walk away from it it's not a hemming tape um it only has adhesive on one side so i put this right on the bottom edge of the fabric and then folded it up and did my hem as usual and again this is just going to help with the longevity of your stretch garments um and just make them wear a lot longer and last a lot longer and who doesn't want that all right the next are design rulers now i'm i'm like not a master pattern drafter by any means but i do like hacking patterns and yeah there's times when i can get away with like doing a nice hand-drawn curve or something like that um but if i have to replicate it on another part of the pattern that's where things get a little dicey so i these all came in a set um and i think actually i have more in my drawer i is there, i think there was wait one two three four five six there's one missing i think it was a pack of seven um I'll find them again and I'll link them below. They took months to come though. So if you do go through and order them, it's basically like Christmas when they show up because you'll have forgotten that you ordered them in the first place. <laughs> um, yeah, so these, I mean, I wanna get more into bra drafting and stuff like that. Oh, that's the other one that comes with it. Hang on, is this one. Um, and so I don't know if you remember, I had a, I had a bit of an issue drafting a bralette 
not in a way for it to fit me, but in a way that I could like teach other people to do it and get consistent results. And it was because I didn't have one of these. So uh, yeah, that video is coming down the pipe now that I have one of these. And truthfully, like I don't need all of those rulers, but they came in a pack. And you know, one thing that's really beneficial about getting a pack of rulers like that is that each of those rulers has a specific function. So in terms of like kind of upping your game when it comes to sewing, just taking some time with each ruler and learning what each ruler is for and how to use it, you're gonna also be building sewing skills. Actually, that's a pretty good idea. If you wanna see videos on that go like through each ruler and how to use each one, let me know in the comments because I might make that for you. Okay, outside of those things, honestly, um, I mean, there's the basics. There's, you know, the rotary cutters, the clips, the pins. I only use glass head pins because I need to be able to iron on top of them. But those are kind of the basic ones. Everybody knows what those look like. These are my like absolute favorites that I feel like don't get their time in the sun. They don't get talked about enough. Maybe the walking foot does, maybe, but anyway. I hope if you struggle with any of those things like threading your machines or getting renegade threads out or your hand stitching and your threads knotting up, like I hope that this stuff helps you out and um, maybe you'll think of even repurposing tools that you already have and finding new uses for them because I mean, we sew, right? We make do. That's that's part of what sewing is. So yeah, those are my favorite tools. Thanks so much for watching today. If you haven't already, please subscribe below and I will see you next time.